How's it going? Today I'm going to be using um, Bonehead Gasket Repair uh, 245 uh, to fix this. And um, and I just wanted to go through the steps with you. Um, each car is different. Uh, I've done this to three different cars so far. Um, two of them being family. One of them still in the family. Uh, and it's going, been going for the last couple of years. Um, no complaints, no overheating. So um, this is uh, my uh, another family vehicle. And um, again, it's it's blowing smoke out the back. Uh, white smoke going for going for coolant. Uh, so I'm going to be using 245 on this car as well. And uh, I just want to go over the steps. Not every car is the same. Um, being that with the water system on this one, this is a Kia. Now. With the last car I did was um, a Magna, and the, I connected a pipe to bring the water out, the water that came out of the motor instead of going into the radiator, and I fed a hose into the radiator. Reason being is that I need to flush the system clean first. I can't have any coolant in there because that's going to interfere with the 245 uh, liquid intelligence. So I need to get make sure that the motor's got just water in there. It doesn't have to be distilled water, it can just be tap water, that's all I'll be using. But we need to get all the coolant in there first. Now, because I can't do that with this motor, um, purely because the way this is, I've got the belts here and everything. If I try and disconnect that and find the hose and go through a whole bunch of drama, trying to connect up some sort of piping here to get past the car and point this in a direction to get water away from the belts and electrical and so forth, it's a bit more drama than needed. So I'm going to drain the radiator. Fill the system back up with clean water, drain the, drain the system again, fill it back up with clean water, and I'm going to repeat that process uh, myself. I'm going to re repeat it probably at least four times just to be sure. Um, if, I, if I still see any green in that water that's coming out of the motor after four flushes, then I'm going to go for probably another two flushes after that. Um, I just need to make sure that it's just 100% water in there, clean water, and no coolant. And uh, the, the symptoms of the, this motor is it's blowing white smoke at the back uh, when she's warming up, uh, mainly when she's um, when she's warming up, when she's um, idling. Uh, if I stop somewhere and then go again, she um, then blows smoke again. Uh, but while driving, it doesn't blow any smoke at all. Uh, being followed, uh, I was. They mentioned to me that it doesn't blow smoke at all while driving. It's only after you've turned off, water's gotten into the cylinder. She's warming up. It's blowing water out through the exhaust. The water and exhaust heats up, blows out the exhaust, and that's a steam you see. It's not actually going through a lot of water or a lot of coolant, but it's going through enough to notice that you're blowing white smoke, and that's why this is a perfect specimen to use uh, 245 with because it's going to fix this car. Uh, liquid intelligence uh, does come in very well packed. It was a nice little package. Uh, this is for the more advanced repair. Comes with these um, small filings as well. I'm uh, not really too sure what it's called actually. Anyway, um, and I've actually used some on the Falcon different car but only just put some of this in and that fixed the leak that I had inside the car um, so yeah the packaging comes with that well packed and a booklet and in the booklet here you've got the page about um, how the liquid intelligence 245 works and uh, yeah, so, and it comes with, it's a big book, it comes with all the information that you would want, but you can also look all this stuff up online as well. Okay, so first things first, I need to drain the system. I've got a bucket underneath, ready to catch water, and I'll catch everything I can and dispose of that properly. Okay, so to, to make a job with um, cleaning the system out, making sure that all the coolant is out, it's easier to remove the thermostat so the, the water's constantly pumping through the motor 
you know, constantly mixing so you can flush it out easier. But uh, with the Kia, it is down there. And uh, there's no way I'm going to be bothered pulling everything apart just to get to where the thermostat is. The Green Intelligence, Peter speaking. How you going, Peter? Uh, <clears throat> it's uh, it's Previa. Um, I've spoken to you a few times in the past using the product um, 245. Right, yep. Um, I'm just about to use it again. Um, I've got right. a, I've got a package that you sent to me once before that I haven't used before. I haven't used it, right. I've got to use it now. Uh, yes. But before I go ahead, I just want to let you know I'm making a YouTube video about me using, using this product. Oh, right, okay, cool. Yeah. And, um, I'm actually recording our phone call, so I can include what you tell me in the video if that's okay. Gotcha. No problems. Yep. Okay, All right. okay so okay. let's recap, because um, it's been a couple of years since I last used it. Okay, so what vehicle is it? it is, this one's a Kia. A Kia, a Kia Caravel. Caravel yeah. yeah, okay. And what, what year is it? It's a 2004. 2004, and is that the one with the wet sleeves? With the what, sorry? The wet sleeves, the, yeah. the, the, like, almost like a truck engine with the... Yeah, yeah, uh, right, yeah. You gotcha, right, okay. All right, and and, uh, and you used it before and it worked? Yes, I've used it uh, multiple times before and it's worked, yeah. Right, okay. How long does it last each time you do it? Uh, well, I've used it on three cars. And, yes. Uh, the, the last car I used it on is my sister's car that she lives down the coast, and uh, she's still driving on it with, with uh, two years ago. She's still driving. On the <laughs> but but you haven't used it on the Kia Carnival. No, not yet. Before, okay. Well, well, of course, you know, with, with the Kia Carnival, the, the cylinder, uh, the combustion chamber cylinder, uh, is is almost free floating. It's totally surrounded by the coolant, and um, so the. Uh, it's held in by a seal top and bottom and what happens of course is that there's so much combustion pressure being exerted there that you get eventually get some movement going on uh, with that cylinder and uh, it, it tends to um, to move too much sometimes you can you can fix this one but it, uh, but we don't know whether it's going to Give you longevity. It's not whether it's you know because there's so much. It's not a traditional engine in in every sense of the word. Uh, so it's you probably you probably find that uh, you could fix it, but it might not last all that long. Okay. All right. Okay. So that's that's number one. Um, you have to, to to do it. What we're going to do is, um, as you as you've done before, is flush the system out every which way you can. Um, we're trying to get all the colour out. A little bit of colour means a little bit of glycol left in there. A little bit of glycol means it probably won't work properly. So we we've got to get that glycol out. Um, and then once you've got it all clean, clean and clear, then uh, you you make up a solution. Of the 245, so you work out what your literature is in the Kia Carnival, and I think it's only about 10 litres. So one litre of 245 would be fine to use. So the whole of the total contents of the can, um, all you do is get a, a you know a bucket out of laundry, put the total contents of the can into the bottom of the bucket, put about two or three litres of, of tap water in with it. Yep. <clears throat> Don't fill the bucket up, just a couple of litres. That's all you need. Give it a swish around as it goes from a thick solution into a thin solution. Pour, pour that into the empty cooling system. Yep. Uh, top that up with a hose. Now, just before we we go on, did have you got uh, a little tube of powder uh, with this product? This one, yeah. yeah. Okay. All, all right. Now, to get the powder in, what we do is we um, now is there on the thing kind of a I can't remember, but is there a cap on the radiator or is it just on the expansion tank on the key kind of No, it's not, there's a cap around the radiator itself. Yeah, okay. So everything goes through the radiator. So what you do with it uh, is you've got the hose in one hand uh, that's on and there's a little tube of powder that comes with it. Uh, take the cap off that, and as you're filling up the cooling system with the hose, tap the powder into the stream of water going into the cooling system so it disperses the powder. So um, once you've got all the powder in, continue to fill up the, the cooling system, and then when you've got a full, put the cap back on it. Now, there's, there's all sorts of different methods, but what we try to do is the easiest way first. And the easiest way would be to 
um, run this vehicle up to full running temperature. Now, what we're trying to do is get it there as quick as we can because I'll generally actually, what... I'll stop you there. I've actually got a, um OBD tool that I can monitor the temperature of the motor. And I was going to disconnect the uh, power fan and bring the yes. temperature up to 110 degrees. Perfect. All right. Uh, that's exactly what you need it to be. So, so you get uh, get the uh, you're talking about the block temperature, not the radiator temperature, aren't you? That's right. The yeah. block temperature is 110, not the radiator temperature. The radiator temperature, if you got that up to 110, your, your block temperature would be like you know 15, yeah. 20 degrees <laughs> further on. It is, you'd blow something up for sure. That's so, right. so. Uh, so just the block temperature, if you can monitor that up to 110 degrees, then when you're there, uh, shut it off. And now whilst the vehicle was going, that combustion chamber that's got the breach above or below it uh, that's pumping combustion gas up in your radiator water is, um, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's pumping that combustion gas. It's huge amounts of uh, combustion gas getting uh, driving the vehicle, but some of that's finding its way in through the breach. Now, as it's doing that, it's pushing the liquid away from the breach rather than allowing it to get in there. But the second you turn that vehicle off now and there's nothing happening in that combustion chamber, you've still got that stored vapor pressure in your cooling system. Everything should reverse at this point. Uh, as it reverses, the, uh, all that stored vapor pressure in your cooling system will, f- will push up against the parameters of your cooling system, find the breach, push the liquid through the breach. Now, as it goes through the breach, the, uh, the water content of that solution, which is roughly 90%, uh, and you know, 10% of 245, 90% water, well, the water content of that solution should do what water does best uh, at, at that temperature inside the breach, it should vaporize the water off, leave the concentrated chemical behind. Under heat and pressure, it reacts, turns into a solid, fixing the problem for you. Now, the key of Carnival being a different style of engine, that won't work exactly like that. What will happen this time uh, is that you've got the powder particles in suspension in the liquid. Now, what will happen is that some of that liquid will go you know, they've been pushed by that 14 or 16 psi cap that you've got on your cooling system, it'll go through that narrow breach because the, the distance between the edge of the combustion chamber to the edge of the water jacket is like four millimeters across. Yep. It's a very narrow breach. Now, as it, as it screams through there, what will happen is that the, uh, the liquid might go through there like a steam train and do nothing. It won't, have, won't stay in there long enough for the heat of the block to flash the water off to make it react to to turn into a solid, but the particles won't. They'll get, they'll, they'll go through. They'll get jammed up inside the breach. And as they jam up, they probably fill the breach up. And when they fill the breach up, that doesn't fix anything. But what it does do is it, it, it um, slows the solution down. And and now instead of going through there like a steam train, it's just oozing through, which is giving the heat of the block far more time to flash the water off to leave the concentrated chemical behind to get it to react. And as it reacts, it will react around those particles. And those particles will then become like uh, aggregate and concrete. They make for a very substantial seal for narrow breaches, which is what this is all about. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, fingers crossed, it, 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 it could possibly last years, but, but it is a problem depending on how far along it is. Sometimes there's a lot of movement on those cylinders for you and they start to work their way loose. And uh, every time that piston moves, uh, sorry, every time the piston cycles, uh, the cylinder moves, it might be micro-movement, but because it is micro-movement, you know, there's, there's resilience. You, know, you, you, you can't sort of uh, hold it in place forever. So, um, now, the, the, the next thing is um, that you do this, just bring it up to temperature multiple times. So what you do is, after you've done it the once, yep. and because without X-ray vision, you never know what's just happened there. It could be a perfect seal, or it might be a partial seal, or it might be a seal that's hanging on with his fingernails. You just don't know. So, so what you do with the hours is let it cool, uh, allow it to set, and then... Should I let, uh, it, uh, I'll let it set overnight to bring it right down no, to temperature? Or? No, no need to, no need to. But you, what, what I suggest is that you use uh, your hand as a, as a... Well, you've got a temperature gauge there anyway, but, yeah. but all, my, my way of doing it is I just put my hand on the block. When it's cool enough to be hand warm, you know, you're not flinch away from the heat of the block. Uh, that's good enough to start it up again uh, and, and bring it up to temperature again, then shut it down again and, and do that three or four times. Yeah. Then... The last time you do it, you let it cool right down, 
and and then open up the radiator cap and run the vehicle. Now, you, if you were alerted to the fact that you had some sort of head gasket damage by the fact that there was bubbling in your radiator water, and there's no bubbling there now, that's it. You've got it. You fixed it. Yep. But if you open it up and you find that there's still some bubbling, but it's not as bad as it once was, you know, maybe half as much or a quarter as much, you know, there's just a few a few bubbles coming through. Well, it's still there. It's still got a porosity leak there somewhere. And all you do now is just go back and, and do that process a few more times. And, and it should take it up. Now, when when you've done all that and you're 200% sure that it's sealed, don't be in a rush to get it out. Leave it in the for maybe seven to ten days yep. and just drive around normally with it over that period of time. And if it can hold for seven to 14 days, maybe two weeks, you know, if it can hold for that period of time, that's considered to be a pretty good seal. At that point there, that's, that's good enough to get it out and, and, um, and put the coolant back in. Now, you, uh, the, you've got to be as vigilant as you were getting the coolant out to put this in. Now, the reverse of that, make sure you get all this out before you put the coolant back in. No cross-contamination happening. Um, and, it, and generally fine if it can, if it can, you go two weeks of normal driving, that's, you know, hot days, cold days, city traffic, expressway, all those things that we you know, that normally tax the vehicle. And, and if it holds, well, that's probably going to give you around about two years or more before it would tend to get back to the way it was. Okay. All right. yeah, that sounds good. <clears throat> and uh, with when I drain this stuff out, I can re-bottle it to use it again later if I wanted to, can't I? Yeah, that's that's um, exactly. We we couldn't believe like a lot of uh, second-hand car dealers do it, and um, I couldn't believe that they could get three or four vehicles out of one can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but it's uh, it seems to be the go, and and that they they can make it work. So. Yeah, and and we, we've also noticed that when you see when you heat heat all that up multiple times, you kill any any chance of bacteria developing. So when you drop it out, drop it out into something that's reasonably clean, uh, and put it into maybe empty milk bottles or something like that, yeah. plastic containers. Make sure there's no milk residue. You know, you, you get some hot water, <laughs> clean that all out, put that in. Now we do understand that when when you put uh, when you put it into a milk bottle at, uh, and, and you leave it in the sun or near ultraviolet, you know, the, the, like daylight coming in through, swimming through a window or something like that, uh, it will eventually grow a bacteria. But if you keep it in the dark, uh, yeah, yeah, I'd just put a, like a, 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 a um, blanket or something like that over it. I'll put oh, it in a, in a, a store in my garage, but it'd be good for other people to know not to do that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, so there you go. Okay, fantastic. All right, well, I'll get into it then, and um, I will also let, uh, as I'm doing this for a family member, so I'll also let them know that this is not a um, solution that's going to last many, many years, probably a year or two. No. Yeah. That's it. That's Hopefully, it's, it's really, look, the key to Carnival is a pain in the butt, but that's that, that particular engine. Uh, but, you know, we're just fingers crossed with it. Uh, it and lots of like lots of guys have used it on the Kia Carnival because it's a hundred percent, hundred percent of every 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 one of those motors is a blown head gasket by about now. You know they they've all got issues. Um, it's a design fault. They fixed it uh, with the later development of an engine. Uh, now it's a it's a great great vehicle, but the uh, that particular engine is um, is a disaster. And uh, but we have got lots of guys that have used this product and got very very good results with it over a long period of time. Yeah, yeah, I'm one of them. I've actually yeah, uh, it... that powder. I've actually used um, probably a third of that container in my Falcon because uh, I had a um, internal uh, heater core leak. Oh yes, yeah. And yeah. I, I put that powder only just about a quarter, uh, a third of it rather, um, into yeah. my radiator and ran it through the system. And I haven't yeah. had a problem with the heater core since. Uh, it's, it's, it's brilliant stuff, absolutely brilliant. The, the other thing that that powder does, for, see, anything you put into a cooling system that is um, uh, it, that's not cool, there's a contaminant. You know, and, and what we're trying to do is, is 
reduce the amount of contaminants you put into a cooling system. Yeah. So anything you put in, you've got to get out. Yeah. So when I made that powder, I made it out of the similar metal powders. It's primarily aluminium particles in there, but there's a whole range of uh, um, dissimilar metals with high nobility to the aluminium. Now, when you when you flush it out, a lot of those particles don't want to come away. They get caught up in every little nook and cranny within the cooling system. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, that's right. And it's very difficult to get them out. So, so when you when you flush them out and, and, and not at all comes out, don't worry about that. Just put the coolant back in, and then the coolant. Yeah, monoethylene glycol is an electrolyte. Uh, so when you put the, the glycol or the antifreeze antifoil back into the cooling system, uh, the electrolyte of, of the glycol uh, allows a charge to run between those dissimilar metals. So the aluminium, which has the lowest nobility, uh, dissolves away to the ones with the high nobility based on the fact that 90% of it is aluminium. Uh, 90% of those powder particles that are left behind dissolve away. The rest will run away over a longer period of time, but within about uh, three weeks after you've had the product in there, you fix the problem, and uh, it's now all good, and you put the coolant back in, three weeks later those particles are basically gone, what's left is 5 acts bugger oil, and they will eventually go by themselves as well. But the, the particles that we use to help um, make the, the seal, um, they're all encapsulated with the sealer, the 245, and they're, uh, they're, they're locked in a matrix. So they they stay whole, they don't break down, uh, but the particles that are left behind, because 99.9% of it never gets used. It's only the small amount that actually gets into that hole that's right, yeah. is doing the work. Yeah, so the rest of it just dissolves away. So don't worry. The, the, the whole thing about using these products is that they are notorious, uh, you know, the, like the, the, these particles are notorious for blocking heater matrices and fluid radiators, but we made them so if there was a problem, it would be short-lived. It would uh, dissolve away by itself. Okay. Yeah, that's good to know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, thanks for your advice. Uh, I think um, that's pretty much covered all my questions. Sure. All right. All the best. Talk to you soon. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye. What I've done here is um, just put an old well, Pepsi bottle here, cake bottle, whatever. Uh, I use electrical tape. And I use, um, well, I actually had too much on there to start off with. I had to take some electrical tape back off to make it a nice snug fit so no water comes out. And I've also got, I've taken the hose out, but I'm going to plug it up, the overflow hose, because... I'm going to be playing with the radiator and I don't want any any water that goes down, any bubbles that come out. I want to make sure it's all to do with the radiator and not the overflow because the overflow could be playing a big part in seeing bubbles or making water disappear. Okay, so I've got my cake bottle there full of water and you see the occasional bubble coming up. There's gets a water lock in here. So you'll notice when I squeeze this hose here, a whole bunch of bubbles are coming out. So you have to keep doing that until you can't get any more water into the system and that's with this particular motor anyway, because with the way it's set up. There's no way of knowing that you've got a full radiator without bleeding the system first. And that's how you're gonna to have to do it. Okay, so I've gotten uh, all the air out. There's only a few little bubbles now when I squeeze the leads. I could wait and let all those bubbles collect, but I'm actually going to start the motor and let the motor um, cycle now. And uh, I have done this to uh, my Previa as well uh, in Australia, Tarago. Um, but I didn't make a video about that one at that particular time. So this basically applies to any car. Uh, it's just this particular car is a different setup engine to what most engines are set up like. Um, like Peter explained earlier. So, yeah, I'll take that bottle out now. I'll get the cap on. That's only clean water. I'll bring the engine up to temperature a couple of times, like I said before, and I'm not going to record every single step because you don't need to see me constantly refilling the radiator, run the engine, refill the radiator, empty the radiator, refill it, run the engine. You don't need to watch all that. 
in between stuff. I've um, already run this, the car twice and it's still a lot of uh, coolant coming out. There's a lot of green as it's not any lighter on the second turn. So um, what I've decided to do was um, unbolt this bar here. I thought I'd see if I could hang it over the front of the car there and I can so that's beautiful. I um, plugged off this hose here so that's the return line that goes water goes back uh, comes out of the motor rather and the return lines at the bottom so instead of the water returning instead of the water returning to the motor it's going to be coming out of the car and I'm going to keep the level there to keep water constantly in the bottle there as the car runs now I'll be able to watch the fluid come out and be able to watch until it changes from a green to a nice clear and then I'll be ready to um, put the system back together and I'll even run it one more cycle once I put the system back together uh, just to make sure that the radiator is all nice and clean as well and then I'll go to the solution In case you're wondering what that hose at the end is for, it's just being creative, having something that can point the water down instead of spraying out of the car. If it decides to spray, that is, it shouldn't, it should just flow. But in case something was to just suddenly cough out, I'd rather it pointing down than pointing towards my garage. When you see the water trickle like that, that's because the thermostat's closed, the, the motor's now cooled down. Once the motor comes back up to temperature, the thermostat will open and the water will start flowing out again like it did, like you saw it happening. Um, that's, a, that's how it normally works with the thermostat in every motor. The thermostat will close up so the engine gets to the temperature it needs to be at running temperature and then when the motor starts to get too hot, then it starts to cycle the water again. Just took the camera down. You see the water in there? Not a green bucket that's making the water green, that's still green. So that's. Keep going. Okay, that's nice and clear now. The camera reflection of the sun isn't the best, but. I can try and hide that. That's nice clean water now, so I can turn the motor off, connect everything back up. I'll let it run again with the radiator connected properly, just to, if there's any green left in the radiator at the top of the radiator that is not being touched by the other side at the moment. And uh, almost there. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to let the motor cycle for a minute with, the, with no radiator cap of course, just having the top up there. Once I'm happy there's no um, bubbles or very little bubbles coming out, I put the cap back on. Also a good way to see um, when the bubbles come up, if, if any green comes back up as well, just to make sure that it's 100% clear. So the car's up to temperature right now. 
inside it shows that the car is in temperature. There's no green coming in those bubbles, so time to drain that radiator and uh, mix up the solution. Okay, so while the engine's cooling, I'm just going to mix this stuff up. I've made sure the bucket's nice and clean before we're doing this. It's got a few stain marks on it. Nothing I can do about that. I'm going to use the whole content, the whole one litre. Look. Another thing on there. To get this lid open, you've actually got to pull this lid here up and pull that nozzle out there. Take that off. Pour this liquid gold into the bucket. And uh, Peter said to mix about three litres, don't have to be exact measurements, but there's a, bit left, a little bit left in there still, so... Every drop matters. Something that's just stir that about a bit. Brain doing the extension bar will do the trick. Okay. So it's always got to wait about another 15 minutes for the engine to cool down a bit. Uh, I already tried to turn the radiator nozzle uh, drain plug off and I could feel the heat at the plug myself and I was like that, that's too soon. So I wait a little bit longer. Don't want to go burning myself for no reason. And uh, once that's, I turn that plug and I can feel that it's only warm, I know that I can drain the water right, right out. Put the plug back in and uh, continue with this. Alright, so where I was at yesterday was um, I was about to put this liquid gold into the car, uh, but I had to wait half an hour for the car to cool down. And um, well, family life happens and didn't get back to it. So I'm continuing that this morning. A uh, couple of things I di didn't mention yesterday either was. Um, Two and a half buckets of water I saved from this car are bottled, so it's 25 litres, um, to dispose of. The rest of uh, what I had to let go onto the ground was um, unfortunate, um, but I must have gone through probably, I don't know, anyone's guess, 50, 80, 50, 80 100 litres of water to flush your system right out properly. You know, you're not there at the hose counting what comes out constantly so um, anyone who's got a problem with what I let go onto the ground you know what else could I do um, and another thing that I didn't ask Peter to explain and uh, he's explained it to me before why this head repair is a better head repair than any other uh, head repair that you can find <coughs> it's basically um, the quick fixes that you buy you can go down to I don't know, in Australia, super cheap auto, auto barn, places like that, and you can get head gasket repair stuff. But that stuff um, is only good for a couple of days. It's a quick it's a quick fix to get you home type of thing. Um, those ones that you'll get from uh, auto shops, you put into your radiator, pretty much instantly you'll see the smoke, the steam stop blowing, the bubbles stop coming out for your radiator and whatnot. But that stuff heats up and hardens while you're running the motor and it hardens like a glass and um, so with the motors how they expand when they're hot and um, so forth but when it cools down all that gasket that's hardened up from the from the sealant breaks down because the glass can't flex um, where what I'm using now today <coughs> it's formulated Kind of like a, I'm, I'm not too sure Peter would explain it better. Um, I think it's like a silicon based. Anyway, it, that might be wrong. Um, but what happens is it hardens up, but doesn't become like glass. It becomes flexible, like a, like a, like a perspex, if you wish. So as the motor cools down and heats up, it expands and so forth with the motor. So the gasket lasts a very long time. It's a really, it's a proper fix to last a couple of years and a cheaper way out of it other than using the products that you can do as a quick fix for a couple of days from one of these other containers um, these other products as well tend to block up water passages and so forth 
uh, liquid intelligence doesn't harden up unless obviously like I explained before um, unless you've got coolant in the system still it's going to make the product go off in the in the engine um, so that's a really important step to make sure that it's clean before you put the product in um, while it's hot it also needs oxygen and I know there's water is oxygen in theory um, but as long as it's in a liquid form it's not going to harden so while you're using this product make sure your radiator is topped up and so forth and the parts that get past the piston past the gasket that's where the combustion is the heat is and that's where the air is and that's where it's going to harden up anywhere else in the motor it's not going to harden up it's not designed to do that it's not designed to block passages and so forth it's actually designed to make sure it doesn't um, Peter's explained this all to me once before uh, if you want a second opinion I'd actually say call Peter because he can explain it better than me I just thought I'd mention it because I forgot to ask Peter to re-talk about that yesterday. So um, without further ado, I'm going to start putting this stuff in the car now and we'll run it up. Unfortunately, the scheme tool I use um, is called EOBD. Um, about a year ago, I think it was, I used it on this very same car and I could actually read um, the temperatures and the RPM and so forth. The app's been changed. You've now got to pay $30 for it. I'm not going to do that. I just wanted to watch the temperature on the car. I'm not going to pay thirty dollars just so I can watch the temperature. So I'm actually going to use a laser light temperature reader to watch what the temperature of the water that comes out of the top of the motor. Um, so when that gets to 110 degrees, that's when I'll turn the motor off and cycle it that way instead. So it's probably a better solution for this video anyway because not everybody has scan tools. Um, more likely, you can run down to. Um, I think I got my, my tool, my laser light from Bunnings for like 30 bucks, um, which is a much easier option than, you know, trying to order a, a scan tool for 150 bucks or something. Um, I'll tell you, I'll get into it. Alrighty, three litres to pour from a bucket. It's a pretty big flow to start off with, so I'm just going to use a little measuring cup to first get the majority of it minority of it into the radiator and uh, while I put this powder in and this is the powder that's but there so it's a little bit over half full that's more than enough to do this job and um, you don't normally get this this is the more advanced kit that comes with this not but you don't normally need this but with this particular car here I'm glad I've got it as Peter explained this motor is not designed like most engines are and it's going to need this so as I put this stuff in, I'm not using gloves, I'm not scared to touch the, the fluid. I'm going to tap this in like just slowly. I'll just keep filling that up with uh, fresh tap water for now. And I'll wait for that to. That's the liquid gold there, so I'll let that get in first before I start adding more water. I'll make sure all that gets in. And I'll start topping it up. Get as much, uh, as much as I can in without getting more bubbles through there. And then I'll put the radiator cap on, start it. I'll watch the temperature that comes out. Using this guy here. <laughs> so 
so what you saw me do just then was I got a fan relay, fan relay, and the main fan relay I've removed. So now the fan's not going to cut in, so automatically keep the car cooling. I want the temperature to come up to 110 degrees. So I just got to wait now until it's 110 and turn the engine off. Okay, I didn't expect this to happen, but uh, I don't want to play with um, hot steam, and that's a bit scary to me if that hose popped off. I've got 100 degrees spraying at me, so uh, I turned it off there. Uh, general rule is when you turn the car off, the head of the block anyway is really hot, so that's um, a lot hotter in there than what the water is, so that should be perfectly fine anyway. I'm just going to have to let that rest now for, say, about an hour until it's touched again. I'm going to change that clamp so that doesn't happen again. That's actually something that should be looked after anyway because if that happens now, that could possibly happen while driving as well. So, um, yeah, I'll let that cool down, fix that up, and then we'll go again. Now another good thing to keep in mind is that even though the car, I let the water, the radiator temperature, theoretically, um, come up to um, 100 degrees before I turned it off, the inside temperature, the car running temperature tells me that it's, it's running at normal temperature still. So you could be overheating when that gauge tells you that because you're running at normal temperature. So when you're driving a car, if it overheats, pretty much if you're past that halfway mark of normal running temperature, it's time to pull over and let the car rest. Don't let it go right up to the H where it says hot. Because it's hot long before it reaches that hot. When it's at that H, when it's at that line of hot, that's at the point of blowing head gaskets or breaking something in the engine. You want to stop it after that halfway mark. You want to stop the car and pull over, let it rest. You don't want to keep pushing it until it's cooking it. Okay, so the motor's cooled down. Radio cap's off there. I've reconnected the uh, reservoir. Uh, I cleaned it right out first, took out all the coolant and uh, gave the bottle a good clean and it's just got fresh water in there because I don't want any contaminants from that feeding back into the engine while I'm doing this and having green coolant mixing with the solution, uh, not for a while anyway. Actually, I haven't started the car yet and I just want to make sure that hose is clean first. So I'll take that back off and... Uh, I'll blow the blow at the overflow here just to if there's anything in that line I want to get that out as well. Okay I'm glad I uh, blew that line out because a bit of in that overflow line a bit of green was in there came out so uh, prevent that coming in back into the motor so that was a good thing. Okay so uh, that stuff is good to mix 20 litres the system takes about 11 litres so uh, I've never actually clarified with Peter on this one to top the system back up, but that's how I've always done it before. So I'll fill it back up until, again, like no more bubbles coming through here. Radiator cap on. And now I've got the overflow connected, so I don't have to worry about if there's... When it builds up that much pressure in the system, it's got a pressure release. Uh, I should have done that in the first place, so that's a good note to take down. Slowly climbing. Now at this point here, I normally have a whole bunch of steam coming out of the exhaust. And I don't see any steam coming out of the exhaust at all right now. I do expect it to though, because there'd still be water in the exhaust pipe, even though it might not be coming through the head anymore. Even the mist that I could hear in the motor before is not there anymore. So that first time running looks like she's sealed up, but... Uh, as, as uh, Peter said, do it twice, so that's exactly what I'm going to do, and then drive her around for the next two weeks. That will be a second video to this. I will record on the change and um, how she's responded after two weeks. But um, yeah, so far so good.
and you can see there's a little bit of steam still coming out and water dripping but like I said that's really hard to tell if that's coming from the head or if that's just water that's still on the exhaust pipe so maybe a mixture of both Okay, so we're at 110 degrees now, and she is blowing a bit of steam, so there's still a problem with the head. I might even just do this one more time, I've got to go out now, but I'll, be, I'll do this one more time when I get back. Okay, so giving it one, one last run now, I'm actually going to bring it up to 100 degrees, because okay, that's when the overflow started bubbling last time, about 100 degrees. Then I'm going to plug the relays back in for the fans to come on, and let the van bring itself back to normal running temperature. Uh, that is not the procedure that Peter spoke about. Uh, this is just a little bit extra that I'm throwing in because I think that it is something that um, is beneficial to this project. And um, doing this a third time was not what we uh, doing this a third time was not what me and Peter spoke about either. Um, After letting this run, uh, I'll check the temperature in a second. It's at 65 right now. Um, after letting this run up to 100 degrees uh, for a third time, 100, 110 degrees both for the first time, but the water temperature on the hose uh, at 100 degrees, the head is probably sitting there at about 110, 120. So, in theory, when I let the radiator hose get up to 110, the head is probably sitting about 100, 130, 140. Um, so, a lot higher than what was needed. So, um, this process is going to be a good um, experience result to the product and um and yeah so after this is finished i'll start driving around for a couple of days see how she goes and um if it's going all right i'll hand it back to the family member let him drive for a couple of weeks and then bring it back and i'll make the second video to how it is after a couple of weeks so currently at 100 degrees i'm gonna plug these fans in now i'll not plug the fans in normally i would have disconnected it but that connection there is so difficult. And the side relays. And I'll bring it back down now. There the reservoir is bubbling. Not a lot, but noticeable. And she's not puffing a whole bunch of white smoke. A bit of water coming out of the exhaust, that's normal, but. So that's um, all the water's got to steam out of there as well now, so that's um, a lot better. That'd normally be a big cloud coming out of there. So that's, this is the last process of doing this. And then I'll drive it around. Just one other thing, in case you're wondering, that funny noise you can hear doesn't always do it, it's the thrust bearing on the clutch. There's not much you can do with that. It's brand new, brand new clutch, brand new thrust bearing. That's the sound it makes. So it is what it is. Okay, well that's it for this clip. That's um ran quite fine. Um but I just ran a third time. Uh, and to my surprise, checking the water level, it hasn't used any water after the third run. It's still radiator is still full. I can still see water there. I could even I took the cap off to show you, but that's good enough. The water level is still good on the radiator. So uh, any steam or whatever is going to come out of the exhaust right now, I expect that to be water that's already stored up from the head gasket leaking water. Um, the muffler box itself, um, you know, it can hold quite a lot of water before that ev evaporates out. So now it's driving the car around and, um, you know, see how she goes after a few runs. Um, See if I can find a hill somewhere just to try and get it up and help get some of that water out of the exhaust. Um, I don't really know where actually, but I'll just try and find something. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, I might make another video soon. I need some, I've got a uh, power steering and gearbox leak on my other car. 
And um, give me a second. Best way to explain it. I've used this product before in a different car. Nine years on, still haven't had a leak. Um, this stop leak seal expander. I don't know why the picture on here is showing a picture of a car blowing blue smoke. I guess that's for piston rings or something. Anyway, you can use this. Um, I used it in my van for the gearbox, power steering, the diff. Um, don't use it anywhere. And the engine. Um, I had six oil leaks when I first got the van, and I fixed four of them. Um, but I didn't really leave the stuff in the van long enough. I only left it in there for about a month and a half before I did an oil change. Um, and so it didn't really have, it's supposed to be in there for three months, so I found out later. But I only left it in there for like six weeks and did an oil change. And then I still had two oil leaks. My um, valve cover gasket and my O-ring for the uh, distributor. Uh, and if I had left the stuff in there for three months, chances are I probably would have fixed them up as well. So I'm going to get this product next. That's that one there. Great stuff. I've used it before. I've actually used it a couple of times. I've suggested it to um, family members as well. They've got it. Um, so that's next on the list. And um, I'll actually make a video on putting that in as well. And um, I don't normally promote products. Definitely don't get paid for promoting products. But when it comes to um, using products for cars, for like this one, head gasket, leak sealer, um, coolants for the car and so forth this is the place I'm buying from because I have 100% faith in um, Peter's products anyhow um, until the next clip which will be in a couple of weeks um, to see how the progress of the van is going and if I can take the uh, formula out of the car and off she goes alright so thanks for watching and until um, next time cheers one last minute update um, I've been driving the car for the last day and a half now since doing this and uh, no more steam and no more using water so it looks like it's uh, solved the problem so like Peter said for the next two weeks just leave the solution in there keep driving around and um, yeah take it out and put the coolant back in